Coming up on the Muskie Daily, a new art exhibit brings unique works to the Louis O. Palmer Gallery. A Columbus Museum coasts in the new Concord to educate young kids on science. And the volleyball team strikes back into winning action. Hello, and thanks for joining us on the Muskie Daily. I'm Zach Vinsky. And I'm Christine Holmes. Today on the Muskie Daily, we'll first take a look at the latest art exhibit to hit the Louis O. Palmer Art Gallery on Muskingum's campus. Orbit Media News correspondent Marty Kurtz has more on some of the strange art pieces inside the gallery. The Lilio Palmer Art Gallery began a brand new exhibition that combines 2D and 3D art aspects into a joint exhibit. Experiencing art around Ohio, photography and crafts by Aaron France and David Yoakum start on October 8th with a reception from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. Professor of Art and Director of the Lilio Palmer Art Gallery, Jan Sun, based the exhibit on what students wanted to see. Aaron France focused on the 3D elements of art, making sculptures out of crafts and items that she received from friends and family. David Yoakum geared more towards the 2D side of things with photography, expressing he takes great pride in taking photos and creating things with meaning. Both France and Yoakum enjoy what they do and think that inspiration is the key to art and offered their advice. Follow what inspires you. I find that even though I'm not a full-time artist, I wasn't an art major, the one thing that I can do and until all hours of the night is art. I never get tired doing art. Be true to yourself. I mean, as long as you're, as long as you're doing something that you enjoy doing, you're not trying to take someone else's idea. You're, and you use your own elements. I mean, you know, if, you, if you need something, go out and shoot it. Both Yoakum and France are local artists, and the exhibit will continue to be open until later this month. At their opening reception, roughly 30 Muskegon students and members of the community attended. For Orbit Media News, I'm Marty Kurtz. There is a new club on Muskegon's campus. The Outdoor Initiative Club hopes to get students more involved in outdoor activities. So far, the club has been to Salt Fork State Park for hunting, hiking, and fishing trips and are already in the process of planning future events such as mountain biking, kayaking, and rock climbing. The club will also be having a CPR training course and will also be taking a trip to the wilds. Meetings are held every Monday in room 304 of the Chess Center at 6 o'clock for anyone who is interested in joining Outdoor Initiative Club. You may know COSI as a fun and interactive learning center for people of all ages in Columbus. However, you may not know that COSI is available to science on the road. New Concord residents and their children went to the library on Main Street and got hands-on with the science behind roller coasters last week. The Science Center COSI comes out of Columbus and has a program on wheels where their outreach educators travel around the area and put on assembly presentations for younger children. The presentation at the library was guided by outreach educator. Uh, my favorite educator. part would be um, being able to interact with the kids. So um, getting kids about, excited about science is the highlight of uh, my job. It's one of the things I absolutely love. Um, but absolutely getting them excited, getting them to understand the science behind things that they might love. Like for instance, we're talking about roller coasters. They have no idea pretty much what science is behind roller coasters, but we were able to talk about what forces impact them, and then therefore they could build a roller coaster and have a better understanding of it. Now the session included a Q&A session to get the children interested and excited on the topic. Then there's an interactive activity for the kids to make into groups and build mock roller coasters to see who could get a marble through the loop the fastest. Outreach educators go all around the U.S. to bring all types of presentations to children. This was not the group's first time in New Concord. On October 17th at 8 in the morning, a zombie uprising will be imminent in the trails of Ohio University branch in Zanesville. Leanne Badermach, manager of Southeastern Ohio Symphony Orchestra, also known as COSO, has more details on the event. <laughs> well, we have we have zombies that are going to be along the trail as well, 
Um, you can, you will see the zombies um, as you're running. Um, the zombies can chase you. They um, will not uh, touch you or tackle you or anything like that, but it's kind of um, that fear of flight of, of seeing the zombies getting a little bit scared when you're running um, on this early, early uh, October morning. So starts at 8 a.m. on the 17th at OUZ and you need to pre-register for the event. And you can go to Eventbrite. Um, the link is on our Facebook page. You can get all the information on CSO's Facebook page and their first concert will be held in Brown Chapel on October 18th at seven in the evening. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned because when we come back, we'll be taking a look at the Democratic debate that took place last night. We'll also check out the cities with the top Halloween halls. Stay tuned for all that and more on the Muskie Daily. This is Will Mullins, and I want to encourage you to watch Chapel on Orbit TV Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Thanks. Find out what decisions are being made at Student Senate that could affect your campus organization by tuning into Orbit TV on Tuesdays at 11 in the evening and again on Wednesday through Sunday at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. What happened in Vegas certainly isn't staying there. The good, the bad, and the ugly moments from last night's Democratic debate are already making waves in the 2016 campaign. CNN's Diana Gallagher breaks down the lasting effects of the first face-off. The highs. That the American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Thank you. Me too. Me too. <laughs> and lows. Sir, what does that say about you that you casting a vote for something you weren't really sure about? I think you're being a little rough. Of the Democrats' first debate are now behind them. But Tuesday night's Sin City showdown will likely have a lasting effect on 2016. The general consensus, it was a good debate. Even the Republicans seem to enjoy it. I can tell you that I'm sitting here having debate envy because uh -huh. what we saw today was a master class on debating. And Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders ran away with it. Basically tonight, Hillary Clinton was Beyonce. She was flawless. Of the three other guys, all polling at less than 1% nationally, experts say only Martin O'Malley came close to making a mark. I think O'Malley helped himself. I, I don't know that he helped himself enough, but I think his constant drumbeat of, well, you like that policy? I did it in Maryland. You like that? I did it. I think that actually that was worked very well. Several pundits predicted this was the beginning of the end of the road for Lincoln Chafee and Jim Webb. And some are even saying it could be the same for a particularly popular non-candidate. And if I'm Biden, I don't see any way to get on the stage uh, be between Sanders' performance, certainly near the end, and Hillary Clinton's domination. I don't see a road in for, for Biden. I would have to think that this would give him some pause. Sources close to Biden say that Clinton's debate performance would have no impact on his decision to run for president. In Washington, Diane Gallagher reporting. The quote, life is short, have dessert first, is best said today. October 14th is National Dessert Day. We don't know why, we're just going to go with it. Dessert is a French noun from the word deservive, meaning to remove what has been served. The very first desserts were focused on nutritional, according to calendarday.com. Desserts have evolved from natural sweets and nuts to complex souffles and cakes. Ice cream started out as shaved ice with flavoring and eventually became the dessert we know and love today. Now, if you have trouble remembering if dessert is spelled with one S or two, keep in mind you'll always have a second serving of dessert, especially if no one is looking. Halloween candy is a multi-billion dollar business, but for parents, too many sweet treats can be a big headache. Karen Kafo looks with the cities with the top Halloween halls and creative ways for parents to avoid sugar shock in today's Consumer Watch. From candy corn to chocolate, the Halloween sugar rush is expected to add up to a sweet $2.1 billion in sales. The social network Nextdoor crowdsources information about neighborhoods from residents. 
their treat map feature analyzes who's handing out candy across the U.S. Nextdoor's data found the top towns for Halloween candy are Cary, North Carolina, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Omaha, Nebraska, Columbus, Ohio, and Frisco, Texas. With so much candy going around in the neighborhood, at school, and at parties, parents may want to map out a strategy for that Halloween haul. Parents of children with allergies need to take particular care. Care.com, a website that matches parents with caregivers, recommends inspecting labels on each piece of candy a child eats, even if it's a brand they've had before, as ingredients can change. Teach children not to eat anything without a label and send them to parties with a bag of candy that's safe for their allergies so they don't miss out on the fun. Households that find they simply have too much candy on hand may want to donate some to the organizations that collect candy to send in care packages to servicemen and women overseas. For Consumer Watch, I'm Karen Kafa. Muskingum even got in on the national dessert action today. The dining hall served a variety of sweets today, making the girls go nuts over pumpkin rolls. Up next, I'll be telling you what the weather will be serving up over the next few days. Stick with us. We have the music. We have the cameras. We have the talent. Orbit Media, where the magic happens. On the story. On the quad on the scene. This is the Musky Daily. Update. Tonight's looking to be mostly cloudy with a low of 41 degrees. But tomorrow the sun will be back out with a high of 66. And tomorrow night, it's going to be mostly cloudy with a low of 43. And now a look at your extended forecast. And then after a quick break, I'll be back with your musky sports update. Keep it right here on the Musky Daily. I'm back with your Fighting Musky Sports News. The cross country teams are gearing up for their next meet after running in the OAC Championship. The teams had their second to last tune up on October 2nd when they competed at the All Ohio Championships at Cedarville. Head coach Jacob Gleason saw a lot of good things from the team at the meet, despite not finishing highly on the team standings. And the Muskies will continue to work toward a high finish in the OEC Championships and hope to put as many runners through the NCAA Regionals on November 14th. The teams next compete at the Jenna Strong Invitational at Wilmington on Friday. And the Muskie volleyball team got back in action after following a loss to Heidelberg on Saturday by defeating rival Marietta in straight sets on Tuesday on the road. Taylor Fothery and Brooks Scott combined for 20 kills in the contest to pace the Muskie attack, while Taylor Matthews led the Muskies defense with 15 digs. The Muskies currently stand at 16 and 7 overall on the year and 2 and 2 in the OAC conference, putting them fifth in the conference standings. The team will be back in action on Saturday when they travel to Otterbein. And Muskingum University's men's soccer team lost on Saturday, October 10th at Heidelberg, 4-0. The Fighting Muskies stand at 0-3 in the OAC and 3-9 on the season. The Muskingum trailed 1-0 at the half with a goal led by Heidelberg's Chris Kozak in the 22nd minute. In the second half, three players for Heidelberg got their first goals on the season, giving them the 4-0 lead. The Fighting Muskies faced the Cardinals of Otterbein in their next home game on Saturday. 
Thanks for joining us here on the October 14th edition of the Muskie Daily. For more information, check out the BNM.